team. I'm so excited to keep asking questions about patterns in the sky and look what I'm wearing today. It's an astronomer shirt. If you look really closely, it has patterns of stars. Those are called constellations. Remember that word? Let's say it again. Constellations. Syllable chin drop it. Constellations. Constellations. Four syllables. Yeah, and this shirt shows constellations. It's when stars create a pattern in the sky. Now, okay, we've learned about patterns of the sun, patterns of stars, patterns of nature for the seasons. What else are we missing? What do we see when we go outside at nighttime? You're right, the moon. Let's start it out, ready? Mm, ooh, moon. Well, today we get to learn about a pattern in nature, right? And that pattern is gonna be the moon. Now, I made my uh, moon look like a crescent moon. Can you say crescent? Crescent moon. But then that makes me wonder something. How come the moon sometimes looks like this, like a crescent, and then sometimes the moon looks like a full circle, like in our story today? Well, that's great that I'm wondering that because good readers ask questions before, during, and after the text. So we're going to keep wondering things about the moon. The title of this story is called Crab Moon, and it's written by Ruth Hortz and illustrated by Kate Kessler. And so the author writes the mm -hmm, words and the illustrator draws the, very good, give yourselves three snaps. One, two, three. Crab Moon, I want you to look at the front cover. Let it send messages up your arm to your brain to tell you what the story's gonna be about. Ooh. I see the main, I see a character. I'm thinking he's the main character because he's on the front cover with his flashlight. And I wonder if that's water and the moon's reflecting off of it. And maybe he's going on a search. Well, let's read to find out. Crab Moon. And the title is so important that they write it twice. The title tells us about the story. So the story's going to be about a crab moon. I wonder what crab moon means scooch over for you guys. The summer, oop, that's the season that the story takes place in, so that'll be good to remember because we know a lot about the weather and the sun patterns in summertime. The summer Daniel turned seven, his family rented a cottage at the beach. They arrived on the weekend of the full moon. So that must be what it's called when the moon's in a circle. The full moon in June brings the high tides of the horseshoe crabs, said his mother. I saw them laying their eggs on this beach when I was your age. Does it still happen? Daniel asked. Every summer, his mother answered. Horseshoe crabs have been coming ashore for hundreds of years. They're older than dinosaurs. Can I see them? Daniel asked. You'll have to get up in the middle of the night. I'll come and wake you, she promised. Oh yeah, because I've observed a pattern in the sky that the moon comes out at nighttime. That night, the fat round face of the full moon. Can you say full moon? Yeah, full moon. Wavered on the surface of the water, the path felt cool under Daniel's feet. As the beam of their flashlight swept the beach, he drew a sharp breath. So, oh yeah, it does get cooler at night. I wonder if the moon gives off heat like the sun gives off heat. Near Daniel's feet, a large crab dug in the sand. That's a female, his mother said. The smaller crab on her back is a male. She laid her eggs in that hole, and now she's pulling him across so he can fertilize them. They watched as the female crab swung herself around, still carrying her mate. She made her way back to the water. I wonder if the light from the moon helps animals survive at night. Little by little, the tide, the tide is part of the water. The tide receded. Receded means it goes back, so the tide scooched back. The crabs returned to sea. 
Daniel's feet sank into the sand as he and his mother climbed back up to bed. I remember in our other story, it said that you can't see the stars because the sun is so bright. And I'm noticing that you can still see the moon with stars. So I'm wondering how bright the moon is compared to the sun. In the morning, Daniel raced back to the beach. The tide was low now. The crabs were gone. Curly black seaweed was strewn on the sand like streamers left over from a party. That's the seaweed. Then Daniel saw one last lonely crab marooned upside down. She looked dead and dry. He found a piece of driftwood and gently nudged her. One leg moved. The other crabs had scratched their tracks in the sand where they had swung themselves around and gone home. How could this crab follow unless someone turned her over? I enjoy how the author and illustrator added a lot of sensory details to this story because it really helps us feel a part of the story. Daniel reached out one nervous finger. The tail felt stiff, but not sharp. He carefully lifted the crab. As her body left the ground, her claws started to snap. Daniel put her down fast. Then he took a deep breath, reached for her again. This time he quickly turned the crab over and gently set her down. Daniel grinned. Barnacles and slipper shells covered the crab's back like jewels on a crown. She set off down the beach pausing and pulling her shell through the sand, quiet as queen. There's no moon out right now because it's daylight, right? That's the pattern that we observe. Slowly and grandly, the crab pulled herself forward. Stepping and pausing, Daniel's feet felt their way into the bay. He followed until she disappeared. Then he gave the water one last long look and whispered to his horseshoe crab, See you next summer. I wonder if the moon looks different in different seasons. And that makes me wonder, how does the moon change? That's back to one of my first wonders, one of my first questions. Ooh. And then this gives us information about horseshoe crabs. But instead, I want to read you some more information about the moon so we can continue asking questions about it. So, I, we're astronomers, right? So I had to do my astronomer research and I found some nonfiction information about the moon. You see, it's titled The Moon, so get ready to put this information in your brain. The moon is in the sky every single night. Ooh, that's good to know. So even if you can't find the moon, it's still up there. It didn't go away. How much of the moon we see changes. Oh, okay. So that means that the moon doesn't change. It doesn't get cut up and become a crescent moon. It just changes how we see it. How the moon looks to us follows a pattern. Oh yeah, so it changes how we see it because the moon works with the earth and with the sun and wherever their position is changes what we get to observe of the moon. That's really interesting. Now the moon follows a pattern and I'm going to show you some pictures on our board about what the pattern of the moon looks like. Okay astronomers, these are the patterns of the moon that are predictable and so it starts with a new moon that's when we can't see the moon, but it's still there. And then it becomes the waxing crescent moon. Waxing means get bigger. And so we're seeing a little bit more of the moon as a crescent. And then it's the first quarter moon. And then it's the waxing gibbous moon. Remember, waxing means bigger. Then we see the full moon. And once we see the full moon, we're going to get smaller now. So it's the waning gibbous moon. Waning means smaller. And then the last quarter half moon. Then the waning crescent moon. Back to the new moon. And that's the moon cycle.
15. I love to build our vocabulary. So I've got some pictures of real images of the moon that I'm going to teach you about to support what we've already learned about the moon. So this is a picture of the harvest moon. Yeah, what do you see? It's orange and it looks really big. That's because during a time in the autumn equinox, which we learned about when we learned about the seasons, the moon appears to be really big, so they call it the harvest moon because we harvest things in the fall. Ooh, here's a picture of an astronaut. Let's do a syllable chin drop for astronaut. Ready? Astronaut. Clap it out. Astronaut. Three syllables. An astronaut is someone whose job is to go into space. And Neil Armstrong was the first American to walk on the moon. This is what we call a solar eclipse. What's the initial sound in solar? S solar eclipse. Yeah, it's when the moon, the earth, and the sun all line up. And the moon can appear to either be covering the sun or covering part of the sun. And then here we've got a picture of moon craters. What's the initial sound in craters? K yeah, and so the moon doesn't have an atmosphere to protect itself like the Earth does. And so asteroids or meteorites can zoom into the moon and it creates a what? Crater, very good. That's what the moon looks like all over. This is a picture of a blood moon. It kind of looks similar to when the sun rises and sets. It can appear to be red, can't it? Yeah. And that happens during a lunar eclipse. Astronomers, I want you to continue wondering things about patterns in the sky. We're going to keep building our vocabulary tomorrow. Bye.